Ladies and gentlemen, we are live on twitch.tv slash Asuma. Thanks to Bananas in Chat from Spangleboo and Humbly Bee, as well as Darth Ninja 18, Whipperface, 88TS, Lizzie Bess, and Dante Sequinox. Uh, also, Roman Empire the Second, Luke G184. Thank you for the Bananas Peaks. Amity Ghost as well. Corelli45. Appreciate those Bananas in Chat. The Bananas in Chat. Mean that we are live on the twitch.tv slash the assumer. And peeps, if you're watching on the second channel, if you're watching right now and you didn't know, it's very hard to see. Those are the blocks like, oh, it's night time. I'm gonna sleep in a bed. I'm gonna sleep in a bed. Yes, if you didn't know, I've uploaded two videos to my second channel today. I've gotta sleep in this twice now, that old thing is back. Uh, the first of which was a Hermitcraft data pack update announcement. If you downloaded any of the packs and had trouble with them, please go download them again. There was a problem where it didn't actually uh, update the packs when I uploaded them to the server. And now that has been patched. There was also another video of me showing off the new t-shirts. It's time for a plug. Bam. How is that not updated? No. No computer. I fixed them today. No, I bet the YouTube one still. How is that not fit? Oh, okay. Oh, it's like that, is it? It's like that. All right, where's this stupid program? Uh, where are my adverts? Hi. Uh, advertisement merch. Like, how how are you not updated? That's not possible. Oh. I know why it hasn't updated. It's just those two. You've got to be kidding me. So if I update and change it, what the program does is it copies the file to another location and uses that so that it doesn't use the updated one. That is a stupid feature. That is a stupid feature program. I'm sorry, I know you can't see anything except this inventory screen right now. It's just it's such a brilliant start to an entertainment stream over here. Uh, where is my... Right, so if I do that... Aha! Uh -huh, uh, that is the stupidest feature I've ever seen in a program. That, right, now it's normal. Now let me go update the YouTube one. That is literally the stupidest feature I think I've ever seen. Okay. So now, let's go back to my normal screen. Okay. Okay. So now, when I press the buttons, it should work. How are you that... You, you are trying to make me angry. It's trying to make me angry, peeps. How is that swapped around? Oh, my goodness me. What an amazing start to this live stream. How has that swapped? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Okay. Okay. Okay, I, I just don't know what's up with this program. That's right. Okay, now that one works. Let's pretend none of that happened. Uh, peeps, two new shirts are available on asuma.co slash merch or asumavoid.com slash merchandise. They are amazing. They're in the video on my second channel if you want to see them. Where I play on my 7 and 8 string guitars, playing a Deftones uh, song, one of my favourites, Goon Squad. Amazing. So yeah, what programs does Autumn? I use Slobs, okay? So if you update a file that Slobs uses, it looks like it checks that it's updated, copies the original elsewhere, and uses the original, which I just don't understand why it would do that. That's just that's just going to annoy anyone who ever wants to update something and not have to faff around in the program. Well, we solved that mystery. Solve that mystery. Thanks, program. Thanks, technology. That's completely illogical. Tag Tower, please, says uh, Grubberg. Grubberg, you may have you may have predicted some of the contents of this stream. We're actually going to go and work on uh, on the tag building on play.assumavoid.com today. We'll be going into the plot world and doing some building, which will be fun. I don't think I need any of the new 1.13 blocks, so I do have a 1.13 plot world, but it's I could go there, but I think I'd rather just go on the public one. Uh, anyway, pre-stream noises. We got snazzy technology. Uh, Twin Shen, Big Cow 1028, Firalol, 
subscribe in between the streams if any of you are here thank you for your support at the beginning of this stream we have Jarlavi subscribing and Jarlavi resubscribing with Amazon Prime for three months in a row now if you don't know you can use the Amazon Prime to subscribe here on Twitch Jarlavi how have you managed to subscribe with both regular subscription and Prime I don't know but congratulations on breaking the system also Randy Nicole 2002 is gifting a sub to Cardiff Free, Randy, thank you for the support and thank you for supporting someone in the community. Cardiff Free, thank you for coming and checking out the streams. You are now, you are now a subscriber. You can, you know, put throw emotes at me like dirt face emotes, and call me an idiot. That's what loads of people here like to do. I've noticed it. I've noticed it. Okay, um, we're just we're just doing a little bit of block organisation. Really, no, ain't nothing but a thing, you know. Just being tidy gonna chuck these things into those chests that's my backpack that's supposed to be there this one can go back in the ender chest and uh, we're gonna start this one off with a little bit hanging out a little bit of a chat maybe we're gonna talk about some stuff I don't know I don't know uh, assume what do you think about Doom Eternal says Minecraft builder not much I've watched the trailer of it, it kind of looked like the same game I played before so uh, you know I like Doom 1 I, lo I like Doom 2 maybe I like Doom and Doom Eternal how is your mouse? Still off center. Third stream in a row, says DS. I know, it's like the program hasn't updated. It's like it hasn't been updated. It's like there's been no new update to the program that I use that's correcting the bug. Uh, let's get rid of that kelp. Place these blocks. Yeah, so we're just going to fill in some sand. I, I, know, I, I had a topic in my head, a mind, a thing I wanted to talk mind, a thing I wanted to talk about. So I watched the uh, Joe Rogan and Neil... Neil deGrasse Tyson, I, I never know if I say his name correctly. I mean, it's, I don't think it's even a hard name to say. It just, for some reason, the combination of words in the name just messes with my head. That's just me, though. Uh, watch their podcast, three hours, 20 minutes, amazing stuff. I always really enjoy it when he goes on that show. Uh, he's got his own show called Star Talk as well. I've actually subscribed to their channel, but I don't think their YouTube channel is the proper way to follow what they're up to. Um, he does his podcast with a comedian, and the chemistry they have together is like really fantastic. Uh, that's one of the things I like about Neil, is that he's always got a sense of humour when he's teaching and talking. DeGrasse, says Freeface. Neil DeGrasse Tyson, right? Neil DeGrasse Tyson, says Autumn. There you go. <laughs> um... Yeah, so anyway, watching their podcast, talking about loads of interesting things, loads of science and astrophysics stuff. Um, they mentioned, though, the automation of vehicles. And I can't remember if it was Joe or Neil, but one of them was saying very strongly that it wasn't going to fix traffic. Now, I think if we slowly replace cars with automated cars, it will fix traffic if done right. I want to hear some of y'all opinions on this, and maybe we can discuss it in some detail, you know. Um, here's one thing to mention, if anyone's got fears of automated cars and stuff like that. You know, there's always fear of new technology. Plane journeys are, for the most part, pretty much automated. Um, if you've ever been on a plane, a massive portion of the flight, I believe, is pretty much done by the computer. And the pilots, you know, obviously still have to be very professional and know how to fly a plane but a lot of it is done by the onboard computer uh, and people don't think of that when they're in a plane they're not thinking it's like being in a automated car and you know and, and obviously you can argue that a car is different it, you're on the road just close to other things you're not up in the sky away from lots of stuff but hey it's just something I wanted to point out uh, Iggy says replace cars with public transport and bicycles automated cars will still take up the same amount of space on the roads um, Okay, so there we go. Someone thinks that it will. Now, I think the way you want to think about this, this is the way that I think about it, is that as a driver, you have a certain uh, limitation, let's say, on the, your control of the vehicle. You have reaction times. You have a certain amount of information available to you as a driver. And that, that influences how you drive. What decisions are you going to make? What routes are you going to choose to go places? And a computer can obviously process a crazy amount of information in fractions of a second. So if there is traffic up ahead, remember, automated vehicles will communicate with one another. So when there's traffic, the second the traffic will start to form, the communication of vehicles can create that information and make it readily available to everything, every other vehicle that it would be relevant to. So if you're approaching and you're on a road, 
um, that is going towards let's middle click let's middle click you're on a road that's going towards another road that's full of traffic um, then it can inform you of that and you can change your you know your journey before you get there now you might be thinking well yeah that's great but then all the cars change their journey and now the other car uh, the other road is overloaded with automated cars well you know these things can be calculated because it's all going to be computer algorithms right so it would know the right amount of cars to divert to a different road in order to not then go and create traffic there um Where's my commission-free X Sumo Void merch, says Aurora. It is at asuma.co slash merch. Scroll to the bottom of the screen. You'll find the new shirts and you can, you know, buy them there. Never trust a machine, says Raelian. A person who's using a machine and trusting it to deliver this message to me. I agree with you. We should never trust a machine to do anything at all, should we? It just so happened that your message got through, though. So uh, I guess maybe, maybe on occasions we can trust them. What are your favourite podcasts? X says uh, Twix. I like uh, the Joe Rogan podcast. I like Russell Brand's podcast, although I don't listen to those as much anymore. Um, I feel like I feel like he's so um, caught up in his worldview, like this 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 want for how does he word it? He words it in a particular way, Brand. But he's got this idea of like there being a, a higher sense of being and. He, everyone he brings on, he tends to constantly go to his point of view. And I've heard it so many times, it's it's made some of the stuff a bit of a, a drag, to be fair. Um, I really like the H3 podcast, very uh, comedic and fun podcast. I like Joe Rogan's and I like uh, Sam Harris's Waking Up as well. There's uh, a few other things that I like, but those are the ones that I tend to you know watch like a hawk. And every time there's a new podcast, it's like, right, who's the guest? What's this going to be about? Does it interest me? Can you check the post office in Modern District and see if you have e uh, mail, says Ejax. I do have mail. I uh, need to do that when I finish recording the episode I'm currently recording. I just finished watching a H3 podcast, says Trigor. Yeah, I was watching their last one, but um, I think I prefer... I, f I don't know. Sometimes... Like, it doesn't... I don't know. The topics or whatever being discussed aren't always that interesting. I think I like it most when they have a guest on because if you're invested in that guest then there's a lot you're going to get out of um, out of what you know what's going on but they, they cover like current events and it's mostly stuff that Philly D covers um, so I feel like when I watch their podcast I've kind of already gotten you know the drift or whatever isn't there like a big yeah 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 that's what I was looking for big box of sand so while we're waffling uh, anyway, let's read some noises in the ear. Let's get back to the self... Uh, wait, the hunting ghost says... Well, I, I kind of half read your message. It went right off the screen. Let Put your messages in chat. Get ready. Because I don't want to read them. We're just going to catch up with noises in here and get back on topic. Uh, Joseph 54 throwing bits saying good morning. Joseph, thank you for the bits. I appreciate that support and good morning to you. It's actually evening for me, but I appreciate your message. Uh, hope you have fun. One is subscribing. Uh, CHK23 subscribing with Amazon Prime, Lego Dude17 uh, also subscribing with the Prime, and Ben EX with Amazon Prime. Thank you ever so much for the Prime subscriptions. Greatly appreciated. Hope you're all enjoying the stream. X, you misspelled merch. Mech. It does say free mech. It says free mech. I'll give you that one. I definitely misspelled it. Wow. Anyway, let's let's get over that. Um, so back to the self-driving cars. Someone was pointing out that intersections have less, like, wouldn't be needed if all the cars were self-driving because they could communicate who is moving exactly where. And these cars can move within, you know, much smaller distances of one another, and they can and they can manoeuvre with incredible precision and communicate all of it with one another. Uh, Hunt Ghost says, if all cars are self-driving, there'll be no need for stopping intersections as all the cars will be able to perfectly calculate the correct moment to cross and adjust speed to facilitate it. Yes. Now, with increased um, like flow of traffic and cars reaching destinations better, there come other factors as well. Like, if the cars are automated and people 
choose not to own them and have them sit on their driveway when not in use, but to use them like a public resource, then things like lift sharing could be incredibly um, productive, you know, if all of this stuff is automated by computers that can make massive calculations for what car is going to be in this area when. Um, it's just the possibility of automating driving and giving computers a wealth of information that they can calculate at incredible speeds and communicate with one another can, can turn something that's a really inefficient system. Ro you know, cars and roads are incredibly inefficient, but they feel efficient because they're very personal. You can get in your car and go to where you want to go. But as a whole, if you think outside of your own little bubble, um, they are a very inefficient system because they rely on us. You know, and we're, we're inefficient. The difference between cars and planes is that planes go in a straight line, whereas cars make a lot of turns, stop and starting, etc. Says Harrow. Very good point. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mentioned the plane thing earlier, right? Planes do very much just go in a straight line. So you know, the the, the fear of a, of automated driving versus automated plane flights or whatever. Yeah, there, there, there's a big difference there, isn't there? Maybe there was no need for personal cars either. I mean, eventually, yeah, maybe. If we had... If you think about how many cars spend how much time parked, they spend probably 90% of their time parked for the average person. Maybe even more than that. That's incredibly inefficient. Like, there are all these vehicles sitting around that could manu like transport people. It's... Imagine, imagine it weren't the case. Imagine that all the cars we produced would be in operation 24/7. We would need less in total. If they could be more efficient and effective at driving and getting to destinations, that's another efficiency that could really improve the whole system. Wouldn't cabs go out of business? Says Vortex Mind. Um, yeah, potentially. Well, here's the thing that I heard. So, electronic cars of the future being automated as well. You could uh, buy one and set it up as an Uber. And you can treat it like a business investment because you can tell it to go out and drive and take customers all day, right? Now, the first thing you're going to think is no one's in the car, someone's going to vandalise it, you know. You can put a camera in your car and hold people accountable if they choose to damage the thing. Um, you could potentially buy a car, treat it as a business investment and have the automated process go out and drive people around from A to B all day. And the car can effectively pay for itself. What a interesting... <laughs> way of uh, having transport as like a car that you own being a source of income that drives itself around. I mean that would be just fascinating. Uh, MRE piece is not all cars will become automated though meaning more and ethical decisions will need to be programmed into the vehicle. This has been a prominent issue and you should encourage your audience to fill out a test about these decisions as there are many easily accessible online. I had no idea you could take a test for moral and ethical decisions. That sounds like something interesting. Now when it comes to the moral and ethical decisions, what we're talking about is a car will have the information of crash imminent, you know, turn right, hit two people, turn left, hit one person. But what if the two people are old and the one person is young? You know, I, I, I'm of the mindset, like, is that there is no wrong and right in the world. It's, it's more of an illusion to us. Like, you know, at the end of the day, we're all just matter and particles floating around, like... Our mechanics for surviving the existence allow us to identify other people and see collectives of things as objects. But, you know, that's not to ignore it. I guess I guess to embrace that chaos a little bit, I think sometimes you want to look beyond the individual thing. So if we had to weigh up this horrible decision of, like, do we kill two old people or one young person? Because that's what's going to happen. This car knows it's either going to hit something in front of it or and kill lots of people or it's going to hit a smaller amount of people on either side. Let's say it's literally the scenario we're looking at. That's what's going to happen. I would look at the bigger picture and say, okay, that's a hard decision to make. Maybe we can program it to just flip a coin, right? To take our mind off of having responsibility for that. But in the overall picture, do these machines reduce the deaths overall? Let's say they reduced automobile deaths by you know, over a hundred percent. Would we really want to get hung up on how it chooses a small decision like that? Because the overall benefit is so much bigger. Cyber Andrew says, assuming your streams and discussions are like live podcasts, 
maybe I'm practicing. Maybe I'm podcast practicing. I listen to so many podcasts now. I'm getting like an idea in my mind of how to um, talk like it's a podcast, and then, and then you know these live streams are a place to mess around with that idea. Experts say they should keep their bearing. Oh, so like you should keep going in the direction you're going in. So if you're faced with two things, just just go with the way you're going and not change it. Reducing by over 100%, says Hunt Ghost. That works, doesn't it? Like you can have an increase of 100%. Wait, no, reducing. Does it work that way? So you can increase sight by 200%. So that would be tripling it, right? Because 100% would be doubling it. Or would it? Yeah, it would be doubling it. So 200% is tripling. So if you reduce... No, I don't think it works in reduction, does it? Because if you reduce sight by 100%, that's all of it, I think. I could be getting the numbers wrong. I'm already treating this as a podcast, as Diaz. Well, there you go. There you go. I mean, maybe one day this will be a podcast thing and... But it kind of already is when we talk about these things. Right, back to the noises in the ear. We got a donation here from Huckle, who says, I think it's the most idiotic thing to teach cars our inefficient human-focused traffic system. Instead, the road network should be designed for machines specifically. When we automate cars are mixed with regular drivers, it will always be a compromise. Yeah, that's a very good point to make there. So, as always, thank you so much for the donation and contribution to the discussion, Huckle. I appreciate your support. Um, yeah, that's a that's a really good point. So, initially, we will be designing automated cars to fit into our current road system, and then I guess over time, let's say they get phased out, regular drivers get phased out, and we have we have um, you know more automated cars. Then the automated cars, let's say there's now 100% of them, they will be driving in the system that was made for uh, for us, right? And and then, then I wonder, like, how would you design roads if you were starting with automated cars? Would it, would the whole thing look incredibly different? I imagine there may not even be need for road signs or traditional um, signs and road markings. Like, there would probably be the need for road markings to indicate to a car where it is on the road. But if you thought from the perspective of an automated machine that can communicate all sorts of information with other machines and get information from satellites and things like that. Road systems could look incredibly different. I would have no idea what it would look like, but it could it could be very interesting. Can't we just make road bumper cars so everyone can drive, says Aurora. I mean, geez, don't um don't bumper cars like hurt your neck, is what I seem to remember. I feel like we should be playing City Skylines right now, lol, says Reface. I really want to play that game again. I hope they do an automated cars thing. That would be that would be such a clever expansion pack for that company, right? Like, they could do automated cars and then they could use it, <laughs> maybe in a propagandistic way, to like improve the traffic in your city and go, look, automated cars are good. Asuma, how about Hyperloops and the boring tunnel company? What are your opinions on that? Um, so let's first of all say I think if automated cars done right they could be really great I think the boring company is uh, see my, my problem with Elon Musk and especially more, not him not him as a person and the things he's trying to do more so the cult of personality around him is that I, I look at humanity like in a lot of cases problems are caused by our use of technology and yet we constantly see technology as a solution, not as a problem. Um, I think, I think uh, with the amount of us and the impact we have on the environment, we can be incredibly destructive. And I think something like the Boring Tunnel is supposedly a solution, but it's by using technology to expand, to expand the bandwidth of roads, to create more roads, to have more vehicles. And it, in my mind, that's not a solution. In my mind, we need to find ways to live more in harmony with nature, reduce our impact on the planet. And to me, automated cars could potentially do that. Maybe there's a cost for creating them. Maybe it costs a lot of impact on the planet to get all the materials together. But the end result sounds so much more better because we're already very integrally tied onto cars. Yet if we can have, if we can have AI driving them, things can become more efficient. Efficiency means less impact on the planet, perhaps. 
You sound like a, uh, an episode of Black Mirror, says Link Own. You know, when one day, when the world is too hot for things to grow and everything's painful and difficult and, you know, we've overheated the planet and ruined the environment and life's a struggle, no one will care to debate if, uh, if global warming is real or not. It will just become a fact. I'm not trying to say it is a fact that that's what's going to happen. But uh, but we all have a, a perspective, and when the perspective becomes the reality, I mean, then it is it is like an episode of Black Mirror. The thing is, you might already be living in it because we adapt to our realities. So kids that grow up in some apocalyptic apocalyptic environment to us, it might just be normal to them, and they might be able to live normally with it. Who knows? Everything's kind of relative and organic like that. You know, in the world of politics, left and right, liberal and conservative, if you go and learn about politicians a hundred years ago, which I have done, I, I, I've said it many times, I love watching documentaries and learning about the past, you will notice things where it's like, hang on, a hundred years ago, the people that were liberal were pro things that are conservative today. It's not the same with everything, but there's definitely a case of that. And uh, why did I bring my bed down here? I think, did I make it daytime? I'm talking so much, I don't know what's going on. We're going to grab all of this sand though, because I'm enjoying this discussion. And I hope all of you are enjoying it as well. Uh, Zinaro is here, resubscribed for two months in a row. Thank you, Zinaro, for your resubscription. And Ju Guel G, geez, I probably butchered your name, saying, Stopping traffic fatalities is the sole thing that makes automated driving worth it. Efficiency in traffic is a small bonus. Yes, um, but I mean that's an interesting statement to make because if, as I said a moment ago, efficiency of traffic could mean less pollution, less impact on the environment, and those things too can also create uh, human tragedy in, in, as you said, traffic fertilities. It's, it's, you know, not not saying you're wrong or anything, just like it's fascinating how interconnected everything is because if we can be more efficient with driving and the amount of vehicles that are outputting pollution then there can be less of those side effects that can be as negative as you know poor health and death or something along those lines i'm sure that made sense the first time i said it <sighs> mm, delicious cup of tea we've got here unhinged assassin is throwing bits and doing cheers saying hey assume speaking of the impact on the planet what about the rise in maintenance and remanufacture of parts from the constant driving? I mean, you, you call it a rise. I've not heard anything about a rise in maintenance and remanufacture of parts in the, in the constant driving. I've always looked at driving as a very inefficient and capitalist system where, you know, for the average user, it's getting my car, go to where I want to go, brilliant. I, I bought the petrol, fantastic. Like. But the whole industry seems very geared to profiting from inefficiency. If, efficient, if, if cars could get you places faster and require less maintenance and, you know, all of these things, they become less profitable. I think, I think it's just a thing that I've learned to look at um, things that are negative in the world as being profitable like wasting inefficiency so here's a little story that I heard but didn't get to verify but apparently a car company now check this out I can't remember the name of the car company so kind of sucks that I can't verify this for you but supposedly they crushed thousands and thousands of the cars that they have manufactured to artificially drive up the value of their cars now if let's say you've got a million cars to sale and not a lot of people want them then you have to charge less for your cars and this is a common problem I mean I've got one example for you right now but if you rattle your brain I'm sure you understand what I'm getting at um, that if you can create you know more value for a product you make more money from it so it was more profitable for this company to crush thousands and thousands of their car to create a um, an artificial value increase that meant because they had less cars they would sell for more artificial scarcity says undead graduate there you go and so these are some of the mechanics of our current system now again like i believe that everything everything is always both you know 
good and bad and a mix of everything and so there are obviously good things that our system does but I tend to just gravitate and focus on negative things especially when they're as crazy as that and that is supposedly um, you know a common thing that can happen artificial scarcity basically Apple says surprise jelly I mean I'm not too sure on the mechanics of Apple I think no actually I think I know what you're getting at it's something Nintendo apparently does as well where they deliberately under manufacture things so that they can charge more for it um, in some cases though it is a case of over manufacturing and then realizing what am I am I like an idiot yeah probably I'm just a waffling idiot right now um, yes uh, eHawk 406 has subscribed Marine Chuck 220 has subscribed Amazon Prime and AOL Dude 123 has resubscribed for eight months in a row saying eight months and conspiracy theories from X love it all I mean I didn't know that I was talking conspiracy theory I I, I don't really think anything we're saying is a conspiracy theory I mean maybe that's some people's opinions uh, driving and modifying or just collecting cars are a hobby of many what do um, I, I didn't get to read the rest of your message because it went off the stream but I pretty much sure I under, I'm sure I understand what you're asking there so I, I've, I've had a very negative view of cars for a long time because I've if you can hear it, it sounds like there's thunder and lightning outside and there probably is and apparently we're now in the middle of a thunderstorm there's loads of rain. Wow, that's loud. My window is open. I'm going to go shut my window, peeps. Be right back. Alright, window shut. Uh, Trigor says Mumbo loves cars. Yeah, I mean there are lots of people that loves cars. So as someone who has at some point in my life specifically focused on cars and gone, man, I can see all the things wrong with this. Like people who are into collecting cars and stuff, I get it. Like everyone's got something that they like. Like I collect guitars, right? I've got a handful of guitars. Those guitars have a price on the environment. Their resources taken out of the ground. They took you know there were processes and engineering that was involved to make them exist and they have a carbon input a uh, carbon footprint you know they had to get transported and everything's got a price and I guess you know like cars are one of those things that I've looked at and it's a bit more obvious with cars because cars directly you know from the fumes of the exhaust have this negative impact uh, but it's it's literally the same with any hobby like I so if I'm gonna sit here and criticize car culture I'm using a computer like I'm you know I'm putting carbon into the atmosphere right now and if you want to go oh solar power clean energy it's like well yeah but you know how did we make the solar panel everything's got a price you know stuff stuff just isn't free you know, it's a series of ongoing reactions in this world I collect skulls and cats says Rayleigh I mean that sounds very dark I mean I hope that you collect skulls that are just like decorative ones and that you have cats that you look after but it kind of sounded like that was pretty dark you know I think oh let's use middle click hey you should build a dolphin tank in your base um you know when the base is actually like done done it will it may not need it actually no I think it's I think it's literally a plan of mine was to cage a dolphin so yeah yeah because part of my base is going to be submerged I don't know if you can hear it right now but this rain is ridiculously loud wow so I was thinking of going for a run later and I saw that it was gonna rain and I thought ah, hopefully it'll be a light rain nope it's heavy very heavy X what do you think about the scientists that can grow meat with crystals from mostly anything also they try to bring back some old animals from the ice age to life of DNA I mean whenever you hear these stories are like this fantastic can grow meat in a in a dish tray thing in a scientist lab I mean it just sounds like to me like it's probably a good reason to stick to the normal thing you know there's probably going to be some sort of side effect or consequence somewhere can't really hear the rain but the rain is relaxing even when loud says skeptical Carl yeah it's relaxing if you're indoors like go outside and try and enjoy the rain if you agree to stay in it for the next hour <laughs> I bet you you'll, you'll, you'll start to not like the sound of it Surprise Tolbert says, I think environmental friendliness is a dead end. You can't get environmental damage down to zero. You're just prolonging the inevitable, says Surprise Tolper. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that statement. Uh, which is why why recently I've been... Oh my god, that's so loud. It's 
hard for me to think. Whoa, thunder. So if the stream goes down all of a sudden, it's probably because I've been struck by lightning. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can't get it all the way down to zero. That makes total sense. You know, maybe living with harmony is truly impractical, especially now that we've sort of opened Pandora's box with technology. Uh, but part of me wonders is like, is like, okay, so we're damaging the environment. We can make, you know, suffering in the world go up and species go extinct. But who's to say it shouldn't be another way anyway? Like, if a species goes extinct because of us, I mean, that's all that's ever happened in the cycle of life, is that things come and go. Things have gone extinct. I mean, that is ridiculously loud, my friends. Surely you can hear that. That's bonkers loud. Dear God. It's a hailstorm, says Jack the Cat. It seems like it is. I can't hear the music in my ear. My goodness me. I think I know what to do next. Right, I'm going to stand here for a second. And put the mic near the window. In fact, I'm even going to open the window a teeny tiny bit. Listen to that. Oh god, that's coming in. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> enough of that. I don't want a wet keyboard. Whew, alright. Where did I put that bed? I think I put it back in here, didn't I? Need less cars and more public transport, says Rye Guy. Yeah, possibly. Cars could be public transport when automated, though, I think. Yeah, that's what I expected because of the Guardians. Goodness me, it's so crazy. Um, Skeptical Kyle has subscribed with Amazon Prime. Coldstone37 has also subscribed with Amazon Prime. So thank you for the Prime subscriptions. Please do apologise the loud rain. You know. You know. Uh, Snapence is here subscribing. Thank you ever so much for subscribing, buddy. Appreciate it. Also, Maximus of Midnight is here for donation, saying, Hey, X, thanks for all the great streams this week. Here's two more in the future. Thank you for the donation, buddy. I appreciate the support. I've been do enjoying doing the live streams. Feels good to have some talky ones again. Like, uh, I like waffling about this sort of stuff, you know. It's good. It's good for the soul to have a little waffle. Now I want an actual waffle for some reason. I really want to eat a dirty Pizza Hut pizza. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but the other day the idea of eating one just got in my head. And it's been annoying me ever since. Community cars should probably be... A the future of public transport, says Murasaki Martin. Yeah, they might do with automation. They might become a part of it. X, have you ever heard about the game Anthem? And are you going to get Doom Eternal, says Saifi. I'll probably get Doom Eternal, and I haven't heard of Anthem. Ah, it looks like uh, forces may be over at the Wither Skeleton Farm. X, you and Doc should build a generic beast statue sometimes in the season as a tribute. Every season I hope to see him. Uh, I don't know if that will happen. Me and Doc have something planned together, though. Oh, that was some lightning. Have you seen the leadership spill happening in the Australian politics right now, says Harrow? I have not. Please inform me on what is happening. What is a leadership spill? I've not heard that term before. Really, the UK needs to reverse the 1960s beaching movement on railways. I mean, what is with this weather? It's like it's trying to stop... My live stream, that's too loud. I'm going to mute the music for a second. Listen to this. I don't even know what that sounds like for all the L, but that's just bonkers over here. It's bonkers. Uh, Genie says, Hi X, guess what I found since you mentioned it last episode. Doc, shout out for you in 2011. 13th of December. You want the YouTube link or search key in YouTube? Genie, no need, man. I remember it very vividly because uh, I was around at the time. I appreciate it, though. Uh, it's also actually in my three-year anniversary video or maybe like a one-year anniversary. I make these like anniversary videos over time. I'm due to make one this year as well. And in them... 
uh, I like show clips and explain what was happening. And I think in the first one I did, I'm talking loud now because the rain's so loud. God, that's awful. So in the first one, I like talk about how Doc gave me a shout out. I think I even show like some numbers, like some social blade screenshots and stuff like that. Ah, Skeptical Carl says the the leak of passwords from government officials. I mean, yeah, this is the thing, right? If you're in government, you're probably going to be a few generations older than um, some of us more informed youngsters, let's say, on the internet. Um, that's generally how politics seems to work. It, it takes time. It, you need a lot of experience. Um, so a lot of politicians and stuff aren't as tech savvy. And also, you know, you need someone to be able inside that system to convince other people that you know they need to put money into educating people on how to do passwords properly which might be a hard sell to someone who isn't like knowledgeable on technology so it's like a system of power problem where it's hard to prioritize um, what's important especially to people who don't understand how things that you're trying to tell them are important works so there's obviously like a failure there for someone to come in and uh, teach these people how to do passwords properly. For anyone who is listening, uh, this is this is how this is probably like a best case scenario for what you should have. You should probably only have a handful of passwords that are very uh, long, difficult to predict, or you know doesn't have any words in random, uppercase, lowercase, special characters, numbers in a you know. In a sequence that doesn't resemble much, you know, it really needs to be something very randomized and chaotic. Um, and then with that, it's a good practice to never use those passwords on the same websites. Every part, every website you go on, unique, different password. And so, what you should do is have a password manager of some sort. So you only have to remember like this handful of passwords, these long ones, and then you have a password manager. You know, you can two-step authenticate and do things like that and make your master password very, very secure. And then that one, the, the password manager, holds all of the passwords for the other sites that you use. And with that practice, um, you should be relatively safe because then all of your passwords can be unique and can be like strings of random letters and numbers. And you don't have to remember them all. You just got to remember that one big password. Um, I have an 18-digit randomish password since I have a good memory, says King Infinity. Yeah, I think I think my password is something like 30, 20 letters long. Yeah, probably well over 20, probably approaching 30 letters long. But, you know, it's just one password to remember. Um, so once you've rem memorized the whole thing, which took a bit of time, but it was worth it. Um, LastPass is Zacharaptor. That's, that's one of the many services out there available. Uh, another thing, another thing to mention is that if, as long as the company does the security right, and I believe LastPass does their security right, you might be thinking putting all my passwords in place, putting it in the trust of another company, sounds like a bad idea. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Well, the thing is, the way passwords are cracked is because passwords are often insecure, and with encryption done correctly, if let's say they were able to get your wallet full of passwords, right, for all the websites that you use, they've got all the passwords. Um, because they've downloaded the data. Well, that data is still encrypted. So it's not until they decrypt it that they can see what the passwords actually are. So they may have this information, uh, but they can't see what the passwords are. So then when you have an extremely long password of like 20 to 30 characters, you know, random sequence of numbers and letters, uppercase, lowercase, they're like, it's mathematically almost impossible. It takes extraordinary amounts of time, like, you know, hundreds of thousands of years to crack something as random as that because they use brute forcing techniques. So if you have a password that is literally password, that is probably the first thing that a script would try, right? Before they before they resort to crunching random numbers and sequences of letters in the hopes of striking gold and getting the one that you've got, um, they are, you know, they're going to run through a list of names, words. They're going to try words where you've changed a couple of the letters to numbers. They're going to do password. They're going to do password one, password one two, one two three four, etc. Um, because those are the most commonly entered things for passwords. Um, so if you have this one mega secure password protecting all your others, um, then you know that protects you from digital. Um, hackers and whatnot, people that you don't meet. It doesn't in a way protect you from uh, 
you know, not to paint a nasty picture here, but let's say being held hostage, would that be the right word? You know, physically in real life for your password to get access to stuff, then then you do have all of your eggs in one basket and you hand over access to someone. So there are there is a downside to it, but in terms of like people on the internet hackers and stuff getting hold of um, your accounts, th this way of doing it is supposed to be the, the proper and the strong way of doing it. Usually a brute force approach uses an algorithm that works with keywords first. You try and get lucky and then from there tries everything, says Undermine, yes. Quantum computers are the way to go, says Dello42. From what I understand, quantum computers are supposed to, their applications are supposed to not be particularly great for regular computing, like games and applications using your computer are probably not going to improve because of quantum computing. From what I understand, it's it's far better going to aid um, things like cryptography and scientific research and whatnot. Regular, you know, computer games might not benefit from it, but that might also be because we have to rethink how we create games and program them. They might need it might be that you can't just, you know, put Minecraft on a quantum computer and it runs faster. It might be that you have to rebuild the entire game from the ground up. I don't know, though. I've, I've seen a few things on it. In your AFK vi video, how do you stay left-clicking? Oh, yeah, I've been meaning to do a video on that for a while. I use Discord. It sounds strange, but uh, I'll make a video showing how it's done at some point. Just keep forgetting. Beast Masters, sure, quantum computing is good for decryption, but they're expensive as an egg. Um, I'm not sure if they are good for decrypting. Again, like, I, I watched this video about how quantum computer computing will be faster, but it works differently. And I think the idea is it's not particularly compatible with binary. So it's, it's not like it does binary stuff faster. It's like a whole new type of computing. Uh, Bob Mike, Bob Mick Poopy Pants says, how is X doing? Sorry, how is Scar doing? Uh, hopefully well. I haven't heard anything from him. I'm sure we'll see him pop on the server in the future and then it'll be like, Hi Scar, how you doing? Hope hope everything's good kind of thing, you know. Um, but until then, I don't, I don't I haven't really kept in touch with Scar. Uh, when he's having health problems, we all I think we all just hear from him on Twitter and that's so whatever you guys know is pretty much what we know at this point. But I'm wishing him all the best of course. Uh Sco Skok Skocky Lock <laughs> Has subscribed Ninja, Ninja Ja forty three has subscribed to Amazon Prime. Thank you for using the Prime subscription on me. I appreciate that. Thank you for your subscriptions. Half Spanish guy from Sweden is here with donation saying there's an active thunderstorm back here in the middle east of Sweden as well, and the hard rain almost close to a hailstorm just reached me. And yes, it's loud. To the active topic, I use social engineering to gain access to uh, protectives, not brute force. I. I I, th I hope you don't mean you do that. Jeez, that doesn't sound right, um, ethically. But yeah, social engineering, that's another one. So uh, people, you know, are known for posting a lot of information about themselves online, like through social media and Facebook and maybe even stuff you don't, like, think about or realise. Like, if you tell people you're on holiday and post a picture of you on a beach in another country, you're also telling whoever's looking at that that you're not at your home, you're not at your house. Um, so social engineering is another problem uh, that existed before the internet, but the internet certainly uh, allows people to to do social engineering in a whole other level. Um, there are some like horror stories out there. I've seen some pictures of people like who post um, images of them with like a new credit card, and they put like the, you know the numbers are on there, and then someone even tweeted them and asked what numbers are on the back, and they sent it out. I mean, I half wonder if those stories are true or not, or just people making stuff up for a bit of fun. But, uh, yeah, every information you share online is accessible to anyone, and possibly someone who would use it to for nef nefarious intent. Um, and because we're growing up in, like, a social media generation, people are very comfortable with sharing information online and possibly not really thinking about what it is they're announcing to the world. So think about that, next time you go on holiday, maybe tweet about it when you're back, you know? Just smart thing to do. Right, take that, Skelly Bob. Uh, half Spanish guy from Sweden, thank you for your donation, man, appreciate it. Uh, Regit YouTube has subscribed Amazon Prime. Regit YouTube, thank you for your subscription. 
I appreciate it. Kind of feels like there's too many guardians now. There's too many of them. Let's go drop some sand over here. I think my username is meant to be Ninja Jar 43. Ninja Ninja Jar. Thank you. I, I'm forever butchering that one probably. Someone posted a picture of themselves with a winning lottery ticket online before they cashed it in. When they went to get their winnings, it was already claimed. Says Harrow. Wow. That sucks. That's a that's so unfortunate. Oh man. That really is. Oh, that really sucks. Uh, 50 minutes of sand placing, says Link Clank. That's the only thing we've done, peeps. It's the only thing we've done. We have definitely not talked about anything of value or interest. There's been no form of mental stimulation. Just sand placing. Just sand placing. I mean, if you've had if you've had the volume muted, I feel bad for you. But then again, you don't even know that I feel bad for you because the uh, volume's muted. Boosted Axel says, hey, Asuma in chat. I was wondering how you changed the ore spawning rate on the server. We want to set up... Yeah, so is this something that iskal has been talking about? I left him a comment, I forgot to ask him on Discord, but he keeps talking about like this ore generation change and I'm like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, yeah, so it, it, let me know if you got that from Iskal because I don't know what he's talking about in those videos. Uh, when I watch videos, I'm usually playing and doing other stuff as well, so I can't focus on everything that's being said. Um, but yeah, like I don't know what this whole ore generation thing is at the moment. I think it's just, I don't know, misinformation. Right, now let's get just the last of this in place here because, uh, yeah, this is starting to annoy me now. We've got a guardian, a pesky guardian. Oh, let me leave. Right, there we go. So we've placed all of our sand, which means we'll move on to something different now. Uh, and I think that'll probably be the end of our uh, topical discussion for today. Hope you enjoyed it. We're we'll, we'll, sure we'll do another one again soon. Uh, let's go ahead and drop some of our... Aha! Some of our things into here. Oops. Clicked off the script. Gave me that sand block back. I didn't want that. Right, and I've got that. Awesome. Making good progress over here, right? Probably about halfway done, I think. Technically, all cars in City Skylines are automated, and we know how that ends, says Neil. That's a good point. We were talking about that earlier. Technically, they're already automated. Alright, peeps. Um, so, noises in the ear. Etonoid OS is here with a donation saying, I did a thing. I can still buy bits. Oh, I joined during the live stream talk time. X, do we need a. Do a derp? We need a break from sand. Well, we, we are taking a break from sand now. Etonoid, thank you for your donation. Appreciate it ever so much. Uh, Jazzboy in chat says, so I think Iskal means there were less ores generated in the pre releases when Hermitcraft 6 started. In the release, there are more ores spawning. You see, I don't think that's true. I. I I don't think we, um, I, the pre-release we generated it in, I mean, there was less ore, but I don't think it got fixed. I don't think it got fixed at all. Um, it just is what it is. Anyway, you know, I, uh, I don't know. So we've got to do something else now. Um, and that is... Log on to a different... So in fact, if you want to come join me, we're going to go on play.assumavoid.com now. Now, in order to do this, I think what I'm basically going to do is close this Minecraft window and it should detect the new one um, as a way to switch between servers. So what's it going to do? Okay, there we go. Right, so if I close this, what do y'all see? Interesting. It's like it's frozen. Let's get that off the screen. Okay, is it going to update? Is it going to detect the new one? I think it just did, didn't it? It just caught up and got it. Excellent. So that's that's good to know. I don't have to faff around too much. Cool. So if you want to come play, play.assumavoid.com is the name of the place. Uh, half Spanish guy from Sweden is here with a nation saying, I don't use social engineering for the bad side of gaming. I used to work at a so-called white hat, aka white hacker, and through companies allowing me to infiltrate the company. Only work though. Oh, that's cool. I've heard about that, like uh, ethical hack hacking and stuff. Basically, doing the dirty work on the sides of people you're trying to protect, right? like showing them where the vulnerabilities are. Um, appreciate it. Appreciate it ever so much. The donation, of course. Thank you. And uh, we also got Jimmy, 2901, resubscribed 23 months in a row, saying, one month to go. That's right, my friend. One month 
for that legendary golden derpy face. Cool. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Right, this was my rough idea for a tag uh, building. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load up another Minecraft instance because there's something that we need to build straight away. And I need another Minecraft instance to do it. Uh, we're going to build this tag, but to scale, so to speak. Uh, then we're going to start work on a tag building. So I think somewhere over in that space is where we'll do the tag building. And for now, I'm going to come over here and do something down here. What server is X on right now, says Bolt Action John. Uh, we're on play.assumeavoid.com. Let me put that on the screen for you. I need to get my other copy of Minecraft logged in to my myth-busting world. Whoa. Uh... Oh, okay, yeah, 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 of course. Are we allowed to TP to assume as plots, says Max Boy? I'm not sure if it will let you or not, but I'm not going to have people on the plot while I build. Because this will go wrong quickly if I do. Yeah, okay, so I'm in the myth-busting world, and I'm actually really near to where I wanted to go look. Uh-huh, uh-huh, so we're going to need... What type of clay is that? We're going to need some light grey... Cyan, black, and then quartz. Light grey, cyan, black, and quartz. Oh, that, that was weird. Uh, hardened clay. Light grey, cyan, black, and quartz. All on the same thing. Okay, so... I think that's... Oh, it's the other way around. Alright, peeps. Sorry, I'm not having anyone on the plot because everyone stands directly in front of you. <laughs> Basically. Um, sorry, so to rebuild this, I'm going to start with one, two, three. Okay, that's, there we go. So, building a, a giant name tag for the name to the tag building. Uh, then we go one, two, three, four. F oh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, seven diagonal blocks next. Uh, that's three of them. That should be seven, right? Looks about right. Take off the link. Take off the link. Oh, goodness me, I'm such a fool. Okay, there you go, it's off. Anyway, 1.12.2, if you want to come play, play .com. You can stand around them and watch from the sidelines, is what people like to do. Uh, Gamer Chick says, all these years of playing Minecraft and I've never built in creative. Oh, wow. You should totally do it. Um, building in creative is, you know, awesome. Just can figure stuff out quicker and... Yeah, you can you can just play with a different type of freedom, you know? I think I, th I seem to remember you telling us about that before. Um, so then from up here, I think we want to go down one, two, three, and then surround that with quartz. So that's like uh, part of the top of the name tag. Yeah, this is like the shadow of it, isn't it? Something like that. Now, how many blocks do we go down by here? I think it would be about four... And there you can see, like, the name tag item. I mean, that's not bad, is it? That's pretty much... Although this is this is with the new resource pack, I've just realised. So, the shading is kind of different. So, I might update that. I might update it for the new type of shading. We also have access to a block that I didn't have before, which might look really good in this. Um... Yeah, I think I think we might change out a couple of materials here. So instead of quartz, maybe we should use that. And also we have a flat texture block for sandstone, which I'm going to use instead of the other one. Where is that block? Where is it at? Oh no, it's not in this one. Right, so yeah, okay. So if I want to update that texture, I'm going to have to wait, basically. Because it's not in this edition. But uh, having them all made of flat textures will benefit the pixel art uh, look a lot. We might actually be able to do this with World Edit. 
like, ooh, is there like a double slab thing? The stream is literally using my, all my internet, so no other link is opening, says King Infinity. Oh, that sucks. Is this for a shop on Hermitcraft, says Ditras? No, it's for the uh, it's for the tag. It's for the tag building. Um, 439, says Polymath. Thank you, man. Uh, Mr. Polymath. Wait, wait. Set. Slash, slash, set. 43, 9. Mr. Polymath, if you want to come on the plot, you're more than welcome to. Oh, wow, there we go. Okay. So, maybe what we should do is start off by... I guess I, I probably want to run a replace command. Let's quickly just fill in everything like a so, and then run a replace command. That'd be a pretty good way to get going here. Um, so, let's select upper corner, down to there and slash slash replace we don't know what block idea is 24 2 with 43 9 yeah that's what I'm talking about you know you know um, so if we look at this it seems like we want to go Think about here for the next little bit, and then it's all the way up here. We got a kind of X shape, but it looks a bit fatter than that, doesn't it? How did I do it on the other one? Pretty much the same. Yeah, no, it is pretty much an X shape. So now I think all we need to do is look at changing the uh, end of the name tag here. If we look at the colors, we got like white is actually on top. And then there's like a darker shade of white. So I think we want to find two relatively close shades of white that are easily obtainable in survival as well. Like we've got snow here. Uh, quartz we've already looked at. It's got the uh, the blockiness to it. So actually snow and quartz is kind of it. Unless we want to mess around with gravity blocks. I also just removed the name tag, didn't I? So, starting about here, looks to me like we want to start off with the darker one, which is this. Feels like we need a third one as well. Let's go back here and maybe pinch that texture, which actually looks like the brighter of the two, right? Hmm, that's actually the bright... No, is it brighter than... Maybe we should just use wool. So back to that, then the wool kind of comes out, oops, up a little bit. Like so, and then this is where we use the brighter of the three. Oh, it's got a little bit too much blue in it, doesn't it? Might not actually be a good idea to do it this way, but we'll see. Kind of, kind of loses, kind of loses a lot. Even though it's a little bit close to what we got, kind of loses that definition a little bit. So I'm not sure. Someone's pointing an arrow. Oh yeah, yeah, I've got it on my hotbar. <laughs> that pixel crown says I'm feeling bad because X didn't notice my donation. I'll get to it soon, buddy. Thank you for the donation, man. Um, nerd heard us as bone block agreed. Well, here's the thing. I mean, I'm trying to avoid ones that have like like the quartz have an outline that kind of eh, yeah no maybe that'll probably look nicer than this one here actually I think you're right I think that might work a lot better but then we have to work to make sure they all face the same direction yeah th I could I could see this working maybe then we use white wall as this one and we get that bluishness out yeah, that could totally work. Alright. Uh, 
That's an improvement right there. That's an improvement. Cool. Anyway, uh, that Pixel Crown is here for the nation, so I don't have a big budget, but a fiver is always a way to support. I appreciate it ever so much, man. Thank you for your donation and your support. Sorry it took me four minutes to get around to it. It's like that here on the stream. Uh, but speaking of not having a big budget, like if, if, if supporting me in any way, you know, harms you financially, makes things difficult, if you're tight for money, you know, please don't support me in that way, you know. Having people turn up and watch the streams and watching the YouTube videos makes a world of difference. So thank you everyone um, for supporting me that way as well as the direct way as well. But yeah, I never want it to be a strain for anyone. Um, yeah, that's not, not, not what I want. But uh, appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Now what we're going to do is copy this selection right here. And I have a way in which for us to use this. Uh, what I'd like to do is a quick collision check. Yeah, there, there's going to be an interesting lack of collision that we can take advantage of here. Um, so we're going to go stand in what would be the bottom corner and copy like this. And so now our copying is relative to us. So let's fly over to the space where we're going to be building this tower. And we're just going to start off right here. Lots of space around us and type paste like that. Uh, what I need to do though is place the block that we were standing on top of. So we were standing on top of there. Okay, that's about right. And now what I want to do, this is where things get a little bit tricky. I think it might just be easy for me. Okay, I'm going to grab some glass. Uh, glass is going to be used behind this thing. So let's actually, yeah, let's do it this way around. We're going to grab that. I'm going to go up here. And we'll copy from this spot. Uh, no, sorry, we're going to fill it. Right, we're going to fill it with 95. It's supposed to set. <laughs> I'm also going to close the other Minecraft window. Right. Now we have that. That's what I want. So now I'm going to slash slash expand our selection by one so it encompasses what's in front of it. We are then going to look downwards and copy. Uh, and no, am I already doing this wrong? I think I am. I am indeed doing this wrong. What district will this be located in Hermitcraft, says Professor Scorpia? It's going to be located in the uh, medieval district. I think. Uh, I need to make what I'm doing right here though as small as possible. And I had an idea on how to do that and now as I go to like copy and paste stuff it's a little trickier than I thought. Let's try that again. So now we're going to copy and then we're going to rotate and paste from this position and I hope that I've got this right. So I need to look in the direction ahead and now we paste. Right, perfect, because we've created an overlap sort of knot. Okay, so we need to add a tag to our pasting command, which I believe is dash A. So it's not going to replace air blocks. Wonderful. Now notice how we've got this like overlap of space here. That is exactly what we want. We might be even be able to get a little bit more extreme with that, depending on how much space we need for this build. And I kind of think we could take it to another level here. So if I pull this in, do I also... I think I have to push it out by one as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and take this to another level. Just because it will be a challenge. So we're going to remove these bits again. For the tag game, I'm guessing, says tag stash. Yeah, we're going to build tag tower. And tag tower is going to be unbelievably big. And it's going to be a mega build. Um... But in doing so, we do need to get our like proportions here correct. So we're still selecting the same area, remember. So if I copy, I think it's literally the same process again. If I copy here and rotate and paste there, we're going to pull it across by two blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we rotate. Uh, then we paste minus air. And that, yes, that sticks out by an extra block. That's perfect. That's really space efficient for what I want. We could even go further with it, though. 
I think I think that will then put some blocks touching. So no, we won't. Um, so then we do the same thing again over here. We look at the wall of people. I like how some people have just got elytras flying into the wall. Here's a challenge for everyone watching. Fly your elytra into the wall and we'll have a wall of splattered flies. Uh, let's rotate by 90. Let's paste. And because I'm standing in the relative position again, we get that in the same spot. And now for the final piece, rotate and paste. And we have created the main feature of our build, which is going to be like a clock tower, like the, the part where the clock is, right? Except the name tags from all sides, which is kind of cool. There we go. Look at that. Look at what we can achieve together, peeps. We can achieve anything. We just got a dream, okay? Look, it's Efo. Efo's here as well. Jeez, this is cool. <laughs> oh, it looks really, really derpy. That looks really derpy. We should have like the derpiest thing competition. Who can do the derpiest thing? That's a derpy looking face. Oh, that reminds me. Derpy things? Derpy things. That's derpy. <laughs> I've got a bed for a head. If I press this, if we go to this screen, uh, where is it? That's probably the best way to see it, right? Literally got a bed for a head. You know, just chilling out with a bed on my head. Prank Mumbo says it's Gel Tomochi. Dude! This is the best server to prank Mumbo on. This one right here, I agree. We should prank Mumbo. Wait a minute, he doesn't play on here. Jeez, how would that work? I guess it does say Hermitcraft, doesn't it? The name of the stream. Right, that is, you know, a lot of space right there. Um, so what I've been thinking, I've even got a picture saved on my computer. Um, I've been thinking about, oh, this is going to be tricky. I've been thinking about a tower. Yeah, a clock tower specifically. Um, let's establish a little bit of a build palette here. This is where I want the 1.13 blocks. So I definitely want to take advantage of those stripped logs. But to begin with, I think we're going to go with uh, a rather heavy on the traditional look, right? Um, oak and spruce maybe with the logs. Some fence posts. We should set up a pallet somewhere for sure. I do really want to use the strip logs, actually. Uh, but I've been thinking a sort of circular base. Or maybe not even circular, but around around this. We need to kind of verify where the center of this is. Oh, I hope it's odd. Four on that side. It's not odd. It has an even base, which is always a nightmare. Can that be, can that be corrected? If I shifted that over that way by one block, I think it I think it can be corrected. Ah, nuts. I was all ready to fly into the next part of this, and now we found a problem that needs fixing. It's gonna be a difficult problem to fix, actually. Things are gonna go wrong. Let, let's just accept that this is going to be tricky. Alright. Oh yeah, and it will do that. Okay, so I'll do some manual rebuilding, let's say. Ah, that's a problem. Bam. Okay, so with it being moved over by one, we're probably not going to care too much that that sticks over there a little bit more than usual. So that's fine. Uh, I think I know. I think I know how we should have done that actually. So let's go ahead and repair this. I think I know exactly how we should have done that. So when we do it this time, we're going to make our selection, but we're going to do a different process for moving it. Okay, so we've made our selection. Uh, I'm going to cut this. Okay, that's fine. Did I miss a bit? I think I think I took a slice out of this name tag. Oh, I've made this kind of hard for myself now. So I was standing on this block. 
And where is it in relation to it's out by three? So if I come over here, uh, what block are we in line with? We're in line with the second set of blocks. That would be our, well, hang on, let's do this again. Two over, two over, so that's one over. So if I go, I think, I think that's correct. Yeah, that is correct, but look, absolute pain in the butt with the glass. Done the glass wrong, but hey, it's been moved in by one. I think this this should work out going the whole way around. Uh, Evil X should tag someone with a redstone in the entrance of the tag building, says uh, MR Epic. Evil X will he'll do his own thing when he's ready, you know. You'll see, you'll see. Something will happen. Right, and I think for the last part, we might just want to copy something and rotate it at this point. Because this one over here is going to get messed up. I'm a little late. Why is he building this, says Jutum? Um, because it's a thing that we got to build. we got to build the tag building. And I've taken it upon myself to upgrade the game, so to speak. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I actually only need to go out by nine. Uh, no, I'm gonna. I I am gonna totally mess this. Wait, did I do that right? Did I select this and that? I'm not sure. Ah, oh, looks like I did do it right. Let's go ahead and uh, cut this out of the game. Right. Destroy these leftovers. Uh, I just want to know, can you explain who is Evil Asuma, says Speakius. Alright, so if you don't know the history of Hermitcraft, Evil X is a fellow who tries to blow up the server. Uh, what I would recommend doing is just searching for Evil X playlist. There is a playlist of all videos that Evil X is in, and by watching them, you will learn the history of Evil X and his foolish attempts to blow up the server. Um, those videos are fantastic, by the way. They're some of the like most I don't know what you call them, like biggest productions that I've done. Uh, we're talking like insane amounts of production time. Uh, people helping me out. We've had like just just. You know, you just watch them, you'll understand. <laughs> uh, they, they are special episodes, to say the least. Oh, only three on that side. Well, that gives us a hint that we're doing something wrong there, doesn't it? So over here, we need to go out by one more. Get rid of that. Okay, and now we've got to copy and rotate and paste. Now, when we rotated by 90, we'd go to our right. So we want to start off by gathering this one here and rotate, oops, that by 90. Okay. Now what we're going to do is stand up here. Uh, wait, can I... I think that means I'm standing in this block here. Okay, and then we want to paste... Yeah, look at this. Right, we can actually help ourselves a lot. If we just look... Uh, so that would be wall, then one, two, three. I think we want to rotate. I think I did that right. <laughs> I think I did that right. Oh my goodness me. Okay, well... Alright, I hope this has been useful to you. If you want to use World Edit, um, I hope this has been useful to you because that was some World Edit engineering. Uh, we've given ourselves a 9x9 nine nine room that these, nine ta uh, these name tags are centered on, and the center block is actually very important to us. Let's grab that glass again. Okay, I'm going to need this. Uh, we're going to 
What's the oak oak log? 17. So now we want to generate a circle, a hollow circle, which I believe there is... Is that it? Hollow, hollow cylinder. Too few parameters, 1-1, one, one. what's that? Okay, so... That created that. Let's try that with 17 as the second. Okay, so second number is distance, uh, so we can undo, remember. Let's put 17 as the first number, and 11 as the second. Okay, so now now we have created... Um, that's actually a pretty good shape right there. We'll try a few more, but we're going to have that above and below this thing, and that's going to be like the clock part of the tower. Um, so let's undo. Always good to try a few things. So let's say we put it up to 13. How does the... That's too big, I think, and the circle doesn't look particularly improved. So again, undo, and then try... Let's try 9 this time. That's a lot closer. That actually looks really good. Uh, and the fact that this thing, like, comes out of that a little bit might actually be a good thing. Not entirely sure. That's Basic World Edit, says Chris. It is. Uh, I've only shown Basic World Edit tools, but the logic of using it is something that you have to learn. Like, when you when you learn how to use World Edit, you also have to learn how to think about what you're doing, how you can incorporate the different tools. Like, um, just just it's just the logic of it that watching someone do might help you figure out. You know, some stuff might seem obvious, rotate and place, but doing other things like thinking about where you are when you copy relative to where you're pasting can help you really figure out um, how to do stuff like what we did a moment ago is we stood here when we copied and then we looked at how where we were standing was relative to the square we had in the middle so then we came and stood in the same position to paste stuff like that isn't in the commands of world edit it's in the logic of using it which is uh, what I like about the opportunity to use this is to show that so I think what we're going to need to do is make the thing in the middle have uh, a background that's a dark non-transparent color I like the idea of it being actually maybe I still do like the idea of it being transparent um, and I also like this clearance here we've got a nice clearance so let's say we're gonna build a roof like that and all's good um, I think what we might now want to do is stand here and run the same command so we have the same thing at the base and do we have that one block clearance again we do not so we will undo and lower it by one that's fine okay um, so on top would be a roof and on the bottom would be something that leads to the base structure so now now I'm looking at that and I'm thinking it's very tall which would suggest that maybe the clearance at the top and the bottom shouldn't be there Uh, Mr. Polymath says X, if you do need any world edit tips, give me a shout. Yeah, man, if you've got any tips, I'm, li uh, I'm listening. Um, at the moment, though, I think we're kind of in a, I don't know, like an aesthetic choices sort of phase. Let me go look at my picture of the tower again. Now, the tower that I'm looking at is actually kind of square. So can we birth a, uh, a square roof out of, out of this right here? So let's pretend we're going to build our roof at... Well, that's the vanilla texture. Oh, I know what's happening here. I know exactly what's happening. Huh. Yeah. Oh, that's weird, because that's below the others. This is a cool design, even if it's tall, says Mr. Roberto. And this is, this is just the centerpiece. This is just the bit where you can look from any angle and see what it is. We've got a long way to go with the design. Uh, let's say... Start off with, uh, hmm. Not sure what, what's the right sort of gradient. It's always good to have a reference picture. Let's go look at this picture again. So the gradient there is actually pretty consistent. It's pretty like a, like a straight drive to the top. So why don't we try and achieve the same? Uh, so that would mean if we're going to go up by three, we want to do that. 
that's actually kind of lined up pretty nicely, I think. So then we'll be looking at having a framework, something like that. Uh, here's where we can use this again. One, two, three, four. And we can do the old copy rotate trick, right? So, oh, do you know what? Okay, so I was going to copy here, rotate and paste somewhere else. Uh, if you do it standing in here, if I go copy, we've copied it relative to my position. So now I can go rotate 90 and then I can go and paste and then do that again just by tapping the commands. Right, and very quickly I have just gone and mirrored those all over the place, which is real nice. Um, so now, now we're looking at like a reasonable height of roof on top of this thing. Given, given how big the name tags are, I think we might actually need to scale up the height of this, but it's going to be a two-part thing, I reckon. Um, so this roof is also going to come inwards. And if I go back to that reference image, yeah, at some point where the roofs come in, there's going to be like a second structure. And I think it's probably going to be around here that we start to see it. Um, so let's go ahead and drag these out as well. Looks like a crown, says Carmine, is okay. A crown? Hmm, interesting. Looks like your banner shop for Season 4 says 88TS. It really shouldn't because that was a different sort of build. This is a tower, remember. There's a reason we're building it up high because it's going to get built downwards as well as up. Um... Anyway, we're dragging it in so that we can sort of see uh, where these corners are going to meet. See, they're a little bit closer in some spaces than others. In fact, let's bring that all the way together. So if you're thinking like, oh, your roof doesn't look, you know, that impressive or shapely. We're, we're sort of doing outlines, the details, like all of that stuff comes later, I think. Best to get this like foundational stuff in place, get a good idea of perspective. Uh, means you don't have to build as much as well. In fact, what I could have done is the copy rotate trick I did a moment ago to build all of this. Jeez, I should have thought of that. Um, right, so let's say now uh, we're going to use a bit of spruce in here next. We're going to pull up spruce from here. So if you can imagine that's the first time you see it really because they're going to be like that. That's a very good point. Those walls are going to be here. And then you see the spruce for the first time just there. So this is going to make up the second portion of our building. A tag tower cheeky says good times with Ed. It is a tag tower. I don't know what's cheeky about it. Okay, back to the reference picture. Oh, it's got like a bell. I didn't really notice that. I was more focused on the clock part of it. So it's got like a bell up here. I don't think we need that. But maybe we do. Uh, anyway, this I guess is going to be a little bit taller and then we have our final phase of um, roofing up here, I guess you could say. So let's put on these little lips. They're going to be built up uh, not as steep. Something like that. Do you know what I need to do? I need to literally go and watch Diarian's video on uh, tips of building. There were so many cool tips and stuff in there. What are you referencing, says Gold Blaster? It's just an image that I found on Google. I was searching for towers and then I found something that kind of like gave me a bit of an idea for a vision. Um, I like referring to it to just kind of see what they did. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if these should slope in or out yet is another thing. It does look like a crown, doesn't it? I think I really see that now. People are saying it looks like a crown. I think all we need to do is perhaps mirror the lines we've got here down below. Um, I think we're going to have to lower the whole thing by one because... Oh, I'm just not sure how that's going to work. Let's go ahead and drag these in. 
So we get this space here, which I think is going to end up being filled in. Well, it'd have to be. I feel like for the 800k special, X will have another mask, says P Rep. <laughs> well, I've just got a new one, a new mask. By the way, I have just like zoned out on noises in my ear, been in the zone. So Fred B23, subscribe to Amazon Prime. Laurent Pavot, uh, subscribe to Amazon Prime as well. Thank you for your Prime subscriptions. We have Maserati here resubscribing for 15 months in a row, saying 15 months. Whoa! Did you see my tweet about the plush heads, by the way? I don't think I did. It's been hard to see your stream since school is starting soon and my sleep schedule is messed up. But I was able to get to watch this stream. Well, glad to have you here, buddy. I uh, I didn't see your tweet. Feel free to tweet it at me again. Tree is here. Putting his roots into the community, you know. No, no, we, we won't do the puns again. Uh, Resubscribe for 24 months in a row. Tree, that's a goldie face. Feel free to spam some emotes and show off the goldie face. Appreciate it. Uh, Joel Kip is also here. Resubscribe for 35 months in a row saying, I don't have a witty comment this month. You had 30 days to think of a witty comment and you messed it up. Oh, by the way, it's a diamond face tree, isn't it? Not a gold face. Jeez, I got it the wrong way around. Joel Kip, thank you so much. Appreciate it ever so much. Thank you, everyone, for the support. Tech West has half slabs on the top half for the flat blocks. Uh, yeah, I'm not, not interested in doing that level of detail just yet. We are just, like, scouting out the shape and... Uh, not even the materials are finalized really at this point, but it's just about being able to kind of get an idea at where the build is going. Um, so I really do feel like some sort of modification needs to come here. I mean, the tags are very big. I'm starting to get an idea now, actually. A bit of a weird one. Let's, uh, let's go here. And run that old command again, right? Going through the history. Wait, there they are. So it was nine. Let's go eleven. Oops. Like if we have that, that's interesting. Also, I kind of didn't expect there to be a gap. So let's. Let's make that uh, 10. Huh. Okay, and then let's go down by one more block. And then do 11. Do we want something like that? Do we want it to be... I mean, I feel like that, that kind of works. Maybe we refine it a little bit here and there, the shape. Can we get away with doing the same thing down below? So we would need to do go in the opposite direction now. We need to go up by 1 and try 10. And then up again and try 11. I've got to be careful of something here. It's not, it's not removing any blocks when it generates it. Now if you see that from down below. Like down. Oh. Okay. It's definitely going to obscure the view of the name tags is the problem. It's definitely going to obscure the view of the name tag. I mean, yeah, you're probably going to be down where I'm standing now. But you know it's a name tag. Maybe we can make an excep exception. Maybe it doesn't need to be mirrored to the same height as the top. You know? Don't mirror it, just copy it down, someone says. Are you saying have it a little bit lower so we can see what's going on? Got a little bit of a trap beat going on. Got those trap hi-hats in the Higgity house. Jeez. Okay, so now now let's think about what goes on the inside here. The player the player's gonna actually climb up through the middle of the tag tower to the uh, to like the ceremonial bit at the top. So I'm thinking, like, what are we gonna see behind the tag itself? I feel like it's going to have to be a wooden material, but maybe maybe we use something like white wall up there. Oh, I'm really not sure. I think what I'm going to do for now is get rid of a large chunk of this.
People are saying, someone says a dunce face. <laughs> Why don't you use white terracotta, says our chilies? Because uh, it's like a skin colour as opposed to being white. Uh, ben A Man has subscribed to Amazon Prime. Ben A Man, thank you ever so much for the subscription. I appreciate it and I hope you're enjoying today's live stream here on twitch.tv slash Azuma. The Geek Online says, bear in mind you'll see it form a view of the distance of the sky so obscuring the view from the ground isn't too much of an issue that is true that is true people will fly around and see it so that's the thing layers of stained glass i think i don't want transparency i think it needs to be backed onto something but maybe with a little bit of space um so let's go and let's start off maybe with something like this Okay, um, we have 5 1. So if I go. That should be hollow. It is. So if we have some sort of shaft, so to speak, going through the middle of it, with it being flat like that, you can obviously see that. So there may be a mixture of materials that can uh, kind of take that away a little bit. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Maserati says, I just resent that tweet. Fun fact, I only got Twitter for that tweet to send to Asuma. Cool, thank you for tweeting at me. Oh, Archilles is suggesting we use the white terracotta to blend with the spruce. Uh, 159. It, it gives a clay vibe to the build. I mean... What materials are we going for? Let's look at my reference picture. So the reference picture I got does actually use clay and uh, like a brighter white color. It's it's more like it's more like the uh, wood is actually the trim and not the structure. So if we were to follow the same philosophy, where uh, more of the structure itself is actually made out of other material, we might be able to get there with it. Yeah, it might it might just be that we need to kind of investigate what materials are going to look to good together now. Uh, is it me or is this the like old oak log? No, it's the new one. Mr. Polymath says, "Assumer, is there any chance you can tweet the reference pic?" Um, I can. Yeah, yeah. Or I could just send it to you. Uh. Holy math. There you are. Jeez. Why Why is it always people on my that I'm actually added on Discord are the last people to see in a search? Also, Wells... Oh, Wells is going to be streaming soon. Fascinating. He just sent me a message. Cool. Uh, also, what is this black screen behind me? There we go. Strip birch. We don't have access to that at the moment. I'd love to use that. I think I might have to move this to my other plot world, my 1.13 one, um, and continue it at some point on there. But yeah, I, I think I need to establish the build palette a little bit more now. So we're thinking of using these materials. I think it's nice when you've got your build palette down to, um, to put some of the shapely blocks with it as well, like that. Just remind you of what your options are. I think we're going to use spruce for the darker variety when it's going to get used. Um, and then we need like a, a clay colour that matches that. So potentially it could be white. I don't know if any of these colours would have like a, a theme, a sense of theme about them. Like what colour would suit tag, so to speak. I would use glowstone so you can see it from miles away, says like a boss. Um, good, good suggestion. The something you want to think about earlier than later. You don't want to scramble around later trying to put in a light source, right? So let's go remind ourselves of that. So I'm going to just put them on these corners. Uh, the shapes of this stuff will probably change, by the way. 
but uh, that's essentially there to remind me that we're going to have lights here to light up the, the tag. And it would be the same on the top as well, of course. We want light shining down and all sorts. Probably going to end up using trapdoors in here as well with the lights to kind of hide them a little bit. Down below you won't see it as much because you'll be looking from the ground but up the top here you would see the glowstone texture which isn't so great. So uh, you'd use a trapdoor. What type of... Oh again we don't have the extra trapdoors. So this is kind of pointless now. Use the tag trousers and the dunce face in the tower says Mastery. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to for the exteriors that's for sure. That is for sure. Hmm. Why not try some strip log blocks, says Surf? Uh, I'd love to, but we're in 1.12. I really feel like we're going to end up using one of these. I just need to settle on a colour. Dark green. Eh, it looks good. We've done purple with wood before. That looks nice. And the red is a bit... I don't know. Red's a bit of an obvious choice. It's brown. I feel like they may, they may be the ones. Try lime green, says Osling. I think I want to look for a darker colour. The brown looks kind of nice with it. So let's uh, let's use that command again. So what are we looking at? One five nine twelve. So we put brown behind it. That's going to blend in a lot more with the woods. Uh, let's grab our spruce as well. Actually, what if, as well as this, we also have something to look a bit more structural in the area? Okay. All right. There's glass above my head. I didn't realise. Or a giant fishing pole holding it up as soon as this game of chick. Now it's going to be a tower. It's going to be a proper structure. It's just the scale of it is it's kind of crazy to get your head around. Um, so then maybe we have some like some of this going across. That's that's kind of all right. Again, seeing it from above, seeing it from below. So as it extends up into this space. Our roof that we've built, whoopsie, the roof that we've built, I kind of like, I kind of like this, this sort of hollow curvedness. So let's say we end up with this being, perhaps it's even a slab floor. Let's say we end up with that as a floor. It's going to come in and at some point it's going to meet. Um, this stuff over here. So, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's like... Hmm. Too dark, it needs breaks, someone says. I mean, the idea of it being dark to me. Hmm. Okay, someone says I should try it with white because it looks too brown and dark. And now we've got some contrast, so. But that bit at the top is it. I don't think the white's going to work. I mean, I can see how it would blend with that, but I feel for this build it's just going in the wrong direction. Uh, maybe we try 11. Does blue look good? Gonna need to start farming some cocoa beans as track dog. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Like When you start to build this, then it's like, oh goodness me, I've got to uh, get some resources together. Too blocky in that middle area. Add something super contrasty to make it pop. Um, what is contrasty that I, I, I sort of get what you mean the blue the blue's just not yeah it's not got a pop about it um, 
magenta someone is suggesting, so let's try that. That's got a bit of a pop. Light blue, red, what about stripped oak logs? We can't use stripped oak. Trying a little bit of shape. Yeah, I agree that might be what it needs. But the tags are just right in the way of where the shape would go. Unless unless we were to make the corners... Um, let's come in here. Oh, have I just... Okay, I haven't actually selected anything really. Do you know what? If some of these block placings are getting a bit ugly, so what? <laughs> yeah, that might help. Um, mm, help a little bit. Regular terracotta, says eBank. It should be 172, right? Oh. Um, I you know what? Building building takes time. Don't try and do everything in one day. I think we've got our I think we've got our crown for this building is that it's been called pretty good. I think the cove idea, the curve, is kinda good. Do you know what this might also need? It might need something just out here. Like that. As well, that is a, oh, this is going to take a crazy amount of wood. This build. Okay, the fact that I just built that all in the wrong spot doesn't help. Let's go grab that, do this, do that, some of this, some of that. You know, maybe maybe something like that would help. Probably look a little bit better if it was offset inwards. There's potential. I'm going to keep working on this, but I don't think I'm going to do it on stream for now. Just because you're going to reach a point where you exhaust some of your creativity. I'm not much of a builder. I think we're off to a good start with this build. Uh, but it's got a long ways to go. It really does. It does, it does, it does. It obscures the tags, says Jack Poilier. Yep, that's, that's kind of the thing that's happening there though, right? So we just got to kind of live with that. Um, peeps, this is where I'm going to wrap up today's live stream. I hope you have enjoyed it. I am behind on noises in me. I feel bad. Mrs. Fluffy85, recently having three months in a row. Thank you so much for your support. And Riffanaut, resubscribing for six months in a row. Thank you, peeps. Greatly appreciated. Uh, right now, if you want to enjoy some more Hermitcraft action, I'm going to be hosting Wells Knight, who's streaming right now. Um, but that is pretty much going to be it from me this one. Remember to go check out the two videos I posted on the second channel. As always, thanks for the support. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.